Hello everyone, this is Kumar here. I am again back with another Wednesday talk. So this time, so this is about mainframe scheduling tool CS7. So I'm going to talk about the uh, CS7 scheduling tool, it in its importance and how do we use in real time. So it, it will be like an uh, overview. So just I'm going to uh, tell you like how, when, where we'll be using it and what is the purpose of it. Okay, so let's get started. So first understand what is a CA7, so why it is used. CA7 is an uh, online real-time interactive system which automatically controls, schedules and initiate work according to time-driven and event-driven activities. So it's all about you have a set of jobs, mainframe jobs which is already there. So you wanted to schedule them, either it can be based on the time or event so then we have an CA7 tool. So apart from CA7, so there are other uh, scheduling tools to available. So but today my focus is completely on the CA7. Okay. So this is uh, that's a client's uh, overview on it. So when we when we say about the JCLs, right? So the JCLs we need to schedule them, right? So when uh, uh, scheduling can be in different ways. It can be in a daily base. So that means indicates that the user wants to day run their job daily and you you can add that job to a scheduler okay and similarly there are some jobs that can be scheduled on a weekly base okay and same and uh, you need to select if you want to sell, uh, uh, schedule those jobs either you want to run it from Monday to Friday or it can be like um, Thursday, odd days, even days, so whatever it is, so you, it, it, it depends on uh, your requirements on this, okay. Monthly, monthly base indicates that the user want to define on a monthly schedule. For a monthly job, at least weeks, day of week must be specified if monthly is used. And we, we can also see there is a, there are few jobs which they wanted to run annually at the end of the year, maybe it's on 31st December or or it may be on a specific day of time, so where we they wanted to, uh, whether if they wanted to applying for the some tax systems or they wanted to schedule the profits and losses, uh, they wanted to verify anything, so they they will be having. So it will be running for days sometime, right? So those annual jobs. Why? Because uh, the volume, the data has its uh, more. Okay, I mean it it will be running for several hours instead of saying days. Okay, so monthly it takes. Uh, I mean, you need to understand here. So daily, weekly, monthly, and annually. So daily means maybe we we may get one million transaction or less than one weekly. Uh, five days, five millions, and monthly, uh, one. I mean, twenty days, twenty millions. Annual, so you can consider like twenty into twelve. 40 million records so it's a basic simple example I'm giving you so based on that if a daily job is running for one minute so weekly can be like five minutes monthly can be like 20 minutes similarly annually so you can calculate according to that so that's how the job runs so these are the scheduling jobs categories that we will be defining in the CS7 okay so right so what do we talk in real time? What are the different terms that we use uh, when you're working in a real time, right? So it would, if you're already working in a real time, so this may be like a words you might be hearing or you may be aware of it, but who are joining as a mainframe developers and uh, that's f for them. So you'll be hearing these things, okay? So we'll be hearing like batch cycle. So what do we mean by batch cycle? Sequencing of jobs to run. Uh, in order is called a batch cycle. What happens here? We have a successor that means and predecessor jobs. So successor jobs are initiated automatically when the previous jobs are completed. So you have a set of jobs right after the job A is completed, job will be com uh, will be executed. So that means previous job when one previous job is completed, the next job will be executed. Okay. The initiation of the job is done in two ways. Right. One is time based and other is a event based based on some event so when this uh, well, let me go in let me explain about the time base first the job run based on the time specified in the job so you have a scheduler so you wanted to run this particular job daily at some 6 p.m. or 10 p.m. so according to that it will trigger it's it's like a simple alarm 
right every day i wanted to wake up at 5 o'clock and i wanted to go for a running right so that's how you schedule your alarm and uh, and obviously right so we never wake up early in the morning so we will change the schedule 5 am then another we will be running another alarm at 6 am then at 7 am 8 am it's gone right so <laughs> i mean that's joke jokes apart so time based is a jobs run based on the time specified in the job exactly if you are mapping at 10 at 10 so it will trigger exactly at the 10 10 and then you have something called as an event based if you look at this image there is an event so when you are attending any function or your function or uh, any kind of an uh, school or a college functions or uh, any kind of an uh, conferences they will be having an events right one after the event they will be uh, going on right similarly so when we talk about the jcls rights in the in this so maybe so if we are receiving this particular file from the one of the upstream system so that file if if that xyz dot abc dot ayz file is landing onto the mainframe system then immediately trigger this particular job so that is nothing but some event base some event should happen there if a file can be transmitted via ftp or from linux server or the windows server or mainframe itself in mainframe there will be some job in that job a particular uh, uh, file is created okay or we have a db2 tables so where uh, unload is happening as soon as the unload is uh, ha uh, completed so there will be a file that is written right a new gdg generation file is created so we need to trigger that job so that kind of an event base we can uh, do it and jobs are dependent on other jobs can and run only when they are completed right so this is nothing but it's an event based and what what else we talk so deadline time so what do we mean by deadline time it is a time by which the job should meet the requirements and should start successfully and also we talk about due out time so what is this it is a time before which the job should complete successfully okay elapsed time so average time of last five successful runs of the job is called as elapsed time and this is calculated by cs7 automatically okay submit time so it is a time when you are submitting the jobs that is given to operating system so okay and then now let's look at restart what do you mean by restart there is a job that got failed and you wanted to restart from a particular steps so then we use a term called as a restart restarting a particular job in a ca7 insert the reset card in a jcl and submit it in the panel so they have a panel so from there uh, ca7 operators will be uh, restarting their job and in the c11 so in c11 the step where the job has to start is already tracked and we have to restart from there will be execute panel so that gets restarted but we can even change the step name from where it should be started okay you might be wondering uh, what is a CS7 and C11? Like, let's look at the difference. CS7 is a job scheduler. It allows jobs to be started based on the time of day, week, month, or completion or failure of another job, or even creation of a particular data set. But a C11 is also is a job restart facility, and it can be linked to CS7 when both are present at a site. But C11 is used to set the environment for a job to execute after previous failure. So that means we will be having an RMS job step where uh, it creates, deletes the file. So I mean, we can use within a CS7. Okay, uncatalog, delete any GDG uh, creation sequential data sets by the job itself. Okay, so that means while CS7 actually controls the job restart. Okay, so this is the common difference. And mostly C11 is mostly used in the production instead of model or test. Okay. Now let's let's look at uh, more details. So trigger. So what do we mean by trigger? It is used to describe relationship between jobs. As you, uh, when you're working in a real time, so you'll be if you're working in insurance projects, so there will be a claims process. So the claim settlement should happen in order to make the claim settlement. So you'll be having a set of jobs. So job A, job B, job C, or job one, job two, and job three. So there will be a, and when, at what time, and what, uh, what dependency it has, what time it should trigger. So all this is nothing but a trigger. That is means it's used to describe relationship between jobs in the same schedule. Okay. For example, job one can trigger job two, uh, job two, 
and job two is described as having been triggered by job one. Okay. In the below example, if you look at closure, uh, job two comma job one is called predecessor of uh, job and uh, uh, job three is called as a successor job. Right. Okay. And I look at look at this dependencies. Okay, so now we'll closely look at the dependencies word here. In the below example, job one has an internal requirement of job A, and job one will get posted only when job A runs successfully. So this is nothing but it's a dependency. Hence, job one is said to be dependent on job A. So job two is dependent on job one, job three is dependent on job two, and job one. Right. Whereas here, so you can see this job one itself is dependent on job A. This is nothing but dependencies. You will be seeing successors, predecessors. So that's what it is. Okay. So now let's look at this thing. Okay. What is it? Okay. So standalone jobs. What do you mean by standalone jobs? That means there is no de uh, dependency. Right. So a job which do not trigger any other jobs are called as a standalone job. In the below, uh, if you look at job C. Is a standalone job. So after job C, there is nothing, no other job to trigger. So it once this job gets completed, there is no other jobs to be uh, triggered. So that is nothing but it's a standalone job. Okay. Now let's look at another thing. So what happens when jobs enter the CS7 queue? Right. It can complete normally. Uh, either it can complete normally, or it can execute and fail. Or wait in the queue until all requirements are satisfied. So these are the different. Uh, uh, criteria is that I mean the things that we can normally uh, see in a, uh, when a uh, job is run through CA7 queue. Okay, for jobs that execute and fail, the operator can take the below actions. What are those actions? For example, it executed and failed. The job has executed and it failed. What the CA7 operator has to do? Either he can do force complete. What do we mean by force complete? A failed job is marked within the CS7 as a normal completion. Okay, a job waiting for the successful completion of this job will run if all other requirements of the jobs are satisfied. Right? Then cancel. Either you can cancel. You have been waiting for the job for a longer time. You wanted to cancel. Then he can cancel that particular job. Okay. Then look at. Other few words. What are those few words? Restart. The term restart is interpreted as restarting the job in the step which has failed. Rerun. The term rerun is interpreted as rerunning the job from the top. We have to be careful. So especially when you are uh, working in a production support or you have completely worked on a project and uh, your project went live and you wanted to monitor the jobs and uh, you feel like there is a certain situations where you wanted to restart the job from a particular step then you have to call the CS7 operator and tell restart hey boss uh, restart this job from a particular step so then he will restart from that particular step within that job okay and uh, you feel like okay I need to start the job from the beginning so then you can just use the word called as a rerun the job that's it you have to be very careful so why because as soon as they hear your words from the specific landline number that you are calling so he, he immediately submits whatever you say okay I mean so if you say restart he will do restart if you say rerun so instead of if you swap these things then gone and you have to face the things Okay, be be careful that schedule ID a schedule or job stream can have many different variations so each variation is called as a schedule ID. So what basically schedule ID means? Uh, so in a in a day, uh, you have set of jobs which need to be run at a regular interval of time. So within a 24 hours tough times, there will be a set of job which need to be executed for every two hours, every four hours, or every five hours. So those nothing but it's a schedule. So they will be scheduling that schedule one, schedule two, schedule three, and schedule morning, afternoon, evening okay and then what are the other things then we can see like hold we can keep that particular job hold for a certain period of time and then release Overwrite. sometimes it is necessary to modify the regular JCLs referred to as a master JCL. In such cases, the term used is a override. This process can be done prior to job executing or 
after job has failed so we will say okay boss uh, try to overwrite this with this particular data set and uh, run it okay so that can be done okay recover requires modification of the jcl okay that's it so that's covers the complete uh, not complete i mean to say such so as a uh, overview of uh, ca7 so what exactly and a ca7 operation uh, operating team uh, that they use and also uh, like uh, in in real time so this is other things that you'll be coming across so i have highlighted very important things that everyone has to go through when you're working on a mainframe environment so and these are the buzzwords that you hear a lot okay and finally i would like to say thank you for watching this uh, video and if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and share this okay thanks a lot thank you a lot have a good day